Hi there. I wanted to take a little bit and kind of step through my NixOS configuration because uh, I saw someone share it the other day and it seemed like a cool and helpful thing. Uh, and I'm doing some unique things perhaps in my configuration that uh, maybe some other people can use in theirs. So I've just dropped my repository here with all the files in it. Uh, you can find this on GitHub as well. There'll be a, a link in the description of this video and uh, you can go check this out yourself. So we're just going to kind of look through and see how I put together my whole uh, system configuration, actually not just for the system that I'm currently using, but a couple other machines as well. So first things first, um, I'm using Nix Flakes, so the entry point for all of this happens to be this flake.nix file. And this is where I set all of my dependencies at the very top, see there's a whole big old uh, inputs section. Uh, we'll just collapse that for now. And then over here, the outputs where I actually define all of the um, stuff. So for example, my NixOS configurations. If I pop open a REPL here and load this flake, uh, what we'll see after it crunches all the numbers um, is outputs has a bunch of different things on it, right? Our NixOS modules, NixOS Nix configurations, and uh, like packages, overlays, all that stuff. And that's all defined in the output section here. So uh, the way that I'm creating all of that is using Snowfall Lib, which is a project of mine that kind of does all of the boring work of wiring things together all, kind of all the tedious stuff that you would need to do in your Nix Flake, um, that all gets handled automatically by using these strong conventions uh, for like directory structures. And so there's a reason that I have folders in here named lib and modules, overlays, packages, and systems is because those are conventions from Snowfall Lib, which lets me just say, hey, here's my directory with all of my stuff in it. And it will import everything and hook it all up. Um, I'm actually using the uh, like slightly more complex method here. Um, I could switch this out to a snowfalllib.makeflake, uh, but once upon a time, I needed access to um, this lib here. So snowfalllib, go check it out. Uh, there'll also be a link to that in the description. And so I'm just saying makeflake, and that's what actually produces those, those outputs and everything. Um, and so you can see from some of my inputs, I'm using a couple of overlays. I'm pulling in some modules like Home Manager, uh, and those all come from the inputs. The only thing coming in here is inputs. Um, and then I'm also using DeployRS to deploy all of my systems, which it's really easy. Um, and we'll take a look at how some of this works in a little bit. But first, um, I want to start by looking at maybe the simplest stuff, which will be um, the packages, I think. So I have a bunch of packages, and the way that Snowfall Lib works is I just get to put um, any number of directories. They can be nested or not, and then any default Nix file will be um, imported. And then the directory name will be the name of the like exported package. So for example, I have this CowSay Plus thing. If I go look at its default Nix, this will be uh, a package here that gets called with Nix packages and all, all its goodies that it needs. Uh, and so we can take that and then return some derivation here. In this case, I'm just writing a little shell script. And so there's a couple other of these. Um, I have uh, a handful of these to do things like add a desktop item to quickly open like email. Um, there's a couple things that aren't packaged in Nix packages that I've added for myself, like uh, Dokutsu RS, which is a fan recreation of Cave Story. Um, and so stuff like this is really easy to do because I just drop a default Nix file in here, and then that gets added on packages. So if I go look at my outputs again, outputs packages, uh, pick an architecture, and then we take a look and we'll see all of those are listed here, and the names used are the uh, directory names that are the parent of those default Nix files. So that's how packages work. Um, overlays, kind of the same thing, um, where I have directories, they have a default Nix, and in here, the only difference from a normal overlay is you get 
a, an extra argument. Normally for an overlay, you would have two arguments, which is the like final set of packages and then the previous set of packages. So that way you can add more stuff to uh, Nick's packages. But here we have the ability to like separate out our overlays into separate files. And they sometimes need things from your inputs for your flake um, or you know other stuff from your flake. And so you can get that in here. Uh, and so that's what this third argument is. Otherwise, it's exactly like a normal overlay. And again, Snowfall Lib takes, uh, does all the work of actually wiring everything together. So that way you can just pretty much write your normal overlay and be done. Uh, here, for example, I'm pulling from Unstable. I'm grabbing uh, Chromium so that I have the latest version. Moving on from like packages and overlays, um, let's take a look at systems here before we talk about like modules or anything else. So systems is really cool with Snowfall Lib. Um, there's this structure where inside the systems directory, you can list different architectures mixed with different targets. And so you'll see I have a bunch of x86 stuff, but they're all targeting different um, like builds, if that makes sense. So for example, x86-64 Linux is what you would build if you were just going to be using NixOS on your system. But you can also create an ISO image if you wanted to, uh, or an installer ISO, which is based off the NixOS installer, or a DigitalOcean uh, droplet image, or, or something for an SD card or virtual box. You get the idea. There's a whole bunch of these uh, powered by NixOS generators, which is super cool. Um, and so all of these in here will get a folder with the host name. And inside of that, uh, let's take a look at my laptop, for example. There's a default Nix, which uh, you probably recognize by now as being the entry point for this particular thing. And then the name will be the parent directory, so Jasper. And in here is my configuration for this system. Uh, and so like most uh, NixOS configuration. There's an import with hardware niche and like you can do everything that you normally expect to. Um, the only difference is you'll be getting some stuff uh, additionally in these extra arguments. Um, you'll get your inputs, for example, for your flake. Uh, that can be very useful. And so managing my systems like this is kind of nice. It's pretty good. But the real kicker here is being able to um, write your own modules for NixOS, right? That's how you can very easily share a lot of this configuration. You'll notice this is my whole config for my laptop. There's there's not a lot here. That's because all I have to say is, yes, I want to use it as a workstation, and also maybe I want Steam installed. And that's it. Uh, my desktop as well is slightly longer because I've been playing around with some extra stuff. Um, but for the most part, it's still pretty darn short, right? I get to say, yep, I want my workstation stuff. I want my gaming stuff. I use these wallpapers, things like that. Um, and even setting up some uh, audio devices with Pipewire. And we can take a look at that in a little bit. Before we do, I want to uh, just glance again over at the outputs here, that uh, we have outputs and NixOS configurations. And you'll see all of the names listed here are the configurations in x86-64 Linux, right? Because those are all the ones that are Nix OS. All of the other targets have their own like blank configurations. Um, so for example, on outputs, you can see we have stuff like ISO configurations. And you see there's a couple that I have there or the digital ocean images that I have, DO configurations. And I, can, I only have one at the moment. And so those are exported on the flake as well. Now let's take a look at modules because if you notice in your pattern here, um, it works pretty much the same way. You have your directories and then eventually you have a default Nix. And in here you have a module, which it is exactly what you expect. It's a NixOS module, and if you're not using these, you totally should be. So you can create your own modules that have your own configuration that you prefer and make them easily toggleable and customizable. For example, 
in here, I've created a module for 1Password to enable it and set some extra stuff. So enabling just this option enables all of this stuff, which is really useful. Um, maybe slightly more advanced, um, there's some stuff like enabling Dolphin, which requires some extra setup, right? There's some UDEV packages that I need to make sure I install. That's all taken care of for me by setting Pulse Ultra apps Dolphin enable true. Super cool. Uh, or Looking Glass, for example, I can add in my configuration for the actual program itself. So that way I don't have to go write this config file or manage it. It's a part of the actual module. And just by enabling the module, it gets dragged along, which is super cool. So I'm using a bunch of modules. I have, I have quite a few at this point um, because they're so easy to create which is awesome. Um, and the way that they're managed in Snowfall Lib, any module you have in here is automatically included for each host when you're building. So all of these modules are available in my systems. So if I go back to take a look at, let's say, my laptop again, I have this plus ultra, uh, let's start with apps, this apps steam enable. So if I go to apps and then go down to Steam, we can take a look at this and see enabling Steam right here enables all of this stuff. So it sets up Steam, sets up the remote play uh, stuff so that it can break through the firewall. It configures the hardware stuff, adds some UDIV packages so that I can get GameCube controller support, um, adds uh, some extra desktop items to let me launch Steam in certain ways and also configures compatibility tools so that I can do some cool uh, stuff with Steam. It's awesome. Uh, and all of that is hidden behind just saying Steam enabled. Uh, and we'll look at what this enabled thing is. It's a, just a little helper that I created. Um, and likewise, you can group enabling multiple of these modules. Uh, and I've called these archetypes. Um, so let's see, archetypes. Let's go look at our workstation one. So I've just brought that up on the left here. And you'll see this one enables some other modules that I called suites. And so the idea is you can like layer these things and say, OK, well, I have some suites where um, how about desktop stuff, for example. Here's the desktop suite. If you enable the desktop suite, you get uh, GNOME, you get uh, wallpapers, you get some basic apps. If you enable development, you get uh, some ports open so that way you can develop and check your stuff on another device. You get uh, some tools installed, you get virtualization enabled with Podman, um, all of these things. And so you can group stuff together and then some of those groups can also be grouped together, which is super cool. So that's what I've built up here to have this workstation archetype that enables some suites and a uh, server archetype, for example, which is like a stripped down version, a uh, gaming one, which just adds a bunch of gaming stuff. And so it's really easy to just configure a whole system with like 30 lines of nicks and most of its comments. So that's how I'm using NixOS modules in here. Um, and I'll point out that the packages that we were looking at earlier are also passed to uh, all of the modules as well. So all the modules in here will get stuff uh, from your packages. For example, I have packages uh, passed in here. And inside packages, we'll see um, my package namespace that I've set. If you don't set this, you'll uh, just get it directly on packages itself. But here I have this packages plus ultra, which is all of the packages from my flake, which is super uh, helpful. And so I can just add in stuff from my packages as well, uh, enabling like my email helper, for example. So that's kind of all of the like module stuff. And you can do some really interesting things like configuring uh, GPU pass through, for example, since I wanted to play some games on a Windows VM, I needed to do like a whole bunch of stuff 
to configure that. Um, but thanks to Nix, all of it's just in a config file, which means all of it can be put into a module and then, well, made dynamic. So I have a couple of options that I can set. And then in here, all of the actual hard work of doing the like stuff to enable GPU pass-through is done. And then in my actual system, so my desktop that I'm on right now, all I have to say if I want GPU pass-through is this of enable, set the platform, and give it what graphics card I want to pass through. It's super cool. And then uh, let's take a look at lib up here because, uh, of course, Snowfall lib lets you create your own internal library that's passed to everything. This lib option uh, isn't actually from Nix packages. It's Nix packages plus your stuff. In fact, it's Nix packages plus your stuff plus all of the libraries exposed on inputs for your flake as well. So there's lib.homemanager on here uh, and things like that, which can be really useful to get at since you don't have to go through inputs. And so in lib here, we have uh, a default Nix and you'll notice this doesn't import the other stuff in here. It works just like our packages and systems and modules and overlays where there are just a bunch of these default Nixes and they're all combined together. And so you'll see this uh, lib here refers to your lib itself inside of it. It's the only time where it's a little bit different. Um, inside of your custom library, you have access to your custom library and then your inputs. Uh, as well as, this is more of a development thing, you don't really need this, but Snowfall libs inputs as well in case for whatever reason you needed to get at those. Uh, and in here, you can return uh, attribute sets of little helpers. Uh, you can even scope them if you want. So like I've created little network helpers. So that way in some of my systems, uh, let's see, lib.network. Uh, uh, I want, it is down here somewhere. I know it is. <laughs> um, here we are. So I can do uh, some things like easily create uh, Nginx proxies, for example. So I say network create proxy and uh, easily configure some stuff, which is super helpful. So you can have your own uh, little library for your flake. And this actually gets exposed as well. Uh, on your outputs, if I go to outputs, uh, and we'll see here, lib, and all of these things are on here directly. And so if other people pull in your flake, they can use these library functions uh, and they're really easy to put together. And so uh, any of these, and that enabled thing, by the way, that I've been using is a nice little helper. Whenever you need to say um, option, let's say, something dot enable like minecraft server dot enable but that's all you want to set um, i have a little helper here that's just an attribute set with enable equals true so that way instead of doing uh, services dot my thing dot enable equals true uh, i can just say oh, my thing equals enabled and so that's a little helper for me and so stuff like that you can do as well um, if there's any utilities that you want for example, I'm doing some cool stuff with uh, Pipewire where I'm actually writing the configuration file to like plumb together some devices and create virtual audio nodes as well to like join some things um, so that I can have uh, admittedly uh, audio support for Discord when I'm streaming. Uh, <clears throat> and so I have a couple different audio devices that I configure via the uh, like actual config files for uh, Pipewire. And the way that I do that is, well, before I was like handwriting all of this um, and it was a pain. But now if I open up my desktop where I'm doing all this, you see it's much easier because I can just call a couple functions from my library, right? And that takes care of generating all these things. It's super helpful uh, and really cleans up the configuration as well. So then that gets into uh, how I'm actually like building and deploying this stuff. Uh, so for my current system, you can just use you know, NixOS Rebuild or personally, I'll be using 
Flake, which is uh, another one of my projects on Snowfall Org. Check the description. Um, does the exact same thing. There's just less typing involved. But for all of my other systems, um, I'm using Deploy RS so that I can, instead of uh, saying Flake Switch, for example, I can say Deploy uh, and then give it the name of the thing I want to deploy, like my laptop, for example. Um, just targeting the flake in the current directory and then the host name Jasper. And this is all set up uh, in my flake.nix. Remember this little lib.make deploy thing? Um, that's why I had this lib over here because this refers to, like I mentioned before, the libraries from my flake and all of the inputs of my flake. And so in here, we'll end up with see deploy and I have this little make deploy helper so lib.make deploy and that's what this is calling right here and we just pass in the flake itself um, and then in here I'm doing a little bit of finagling to construct the configuration for deploy RS but really all you need to worry about is that it sets for each host for each like name of a system um, it's going to set some options some configuration and that configuration is just going to be like set the host name to the same host name and also deploy as root and use this command for sudo. Um, that's pretty much it. And from there, we just have a couple of checks that deploy RS wants to do to make sure everything like can be built and deployed safe. And that's all of the work that I need to do to be able to deploy to any of my systems, which is super cool. Uh, and all I have to do is say deploy. So I think that's the majority of kind of what's going on here. I'm doing a lot of things in this flake. Um, it's gotten pretty big, and so I wouldn't be surprised if I missed some things. But honestly, like, NixOS is super duper cool. You should absolutely try out uh, some of these things if you're not doing them already with, like, custom modules. Um, I guess I can show, like, my desktop configuration, for example. I have something for GNOME. Uh, so that I enable like a bunch of extensions, for example, and I need to add uh, like actual deconf uh, configuration as well. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I was also, for example, using Sway. And so you can see my configuration in here is um, like patched with some NixOS related stuff and a bunch of apps are configured and I have the actual config here so there's a lot of really cool things that you can do in NixOS. So uh, again, I'll have some links in the description. Go check that out or you know, leave comments. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or you can follow me over on Mastodon, which uh, again, I'll have a link in the description too. So I hope that some of this has been helpful um, and maybe given some people some ideas of how they could structure things, or maybe you want to check out Snowfall Lib or, or Flake or any uh, other things. And I hope you all have a bunch of fun with NixOS, because I have been. Thanks for watching.